Good evening and welcome back to Talking Your Walk. And this evening's guest is, is such a, a, a graceful lady, shall I say. Her name is Jenny Wild Knight, and she is a, a professional musician, fabulous musician. And she's also um, teaches movement and dance. And she goes with the shamanic practices of sound healing and with the earth. And, and Jenny will tell us more about that than I could in this couple of minutes. So anyway, good evening, Jenny. And thank you so much for joining me. It's great to see you. Good evening, June. Yeah, I'm really honoured to be asked to be part of this series. So thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. So can I ask you, you know, where were you born and okay. grew up? Yeah, well, I was born here in Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury okay. Hospital. Yeah, um, 1983. And um, <laughs> early, a couple of weeks early. And um, brought up in, in Shrewsbury in Shropshire. And my parents still live in the same house, Grangefields oh. Road, behind Priory School. Um, and yeah, it was quite a, a normal upbringing I guess you would say. Um, what, can a, what can a child wear you? Were you you know outgoing or were you introverted? <laughs> no um, yeah I was I was really introverted. Um, I was a, a thinker, I was creative, I would um, dream and vision and and I thought all of this was was everybody did it until only a few years ago <laughs> and so um and I would hear things and um I was very very attuned to sound and music um and my dad um was a is a guitarist and um he used to play in a band in the 60s really really um into his guitar and so and he had a best friend as well and so they used to play guitar all the time and I used to sing with them all the time and um, also dad used to take me to professional music all the time in Birmingham he used to take me to the ballet and he used to take me to concerts and so and and have um, music playing all the time at home all different kinds of classical music rock music pop music um, and so I was really immersed in music from a young age and it was normal to me um we had a piano and i used to make up tunes on it from a really young age and then when i got to school um my my first i was at, at meal brace for a year which i hated and then rabbrook primary school opened brand new school and in the 80s i didn't think there was much of a curriculum they could do what they wanted and it was mega creative it was art music drama dancing so so fortunate to be at that school brand new fully equipped music room and my memories were of every break time and lunch time okay, getting my friends my poor friends getting my friends together because I had all of the all of this in my head um that I needed to get out all of this music all of these harmonies and so I'd get my friends together and take them into the music room every lunch time and tell them exactly what to play you play a C and an E you play an E and a G like this Dun 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 dun, dun, dun. and then I'd layer up these massive compositions. Um and and that now I know being a music teacher was quite an incredible thing to do at the age of six, seven, eight. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, so composition, um you say I'm a professional musician and composition has really always been my my thing, creating music, creating sound and soundscapes. Wow. So then, you know, you, you went into secondary school. How was that for you? Because even that changed from primary to secondary. I mean, you were still in the same area. So no doubt all of a lot of your friends, you know, went to the, the bigger school with you to the secondary school alongside you. But how did you find that transition? And how did you enjoy that period of your life? Yeah, um, I didn't actually at all. Yeah, it was a really... Um, really difficult for me because I loved my primary school and I felt very safe there and it nurtured me and it nurtured my talents um, and then I went to Priory and actually only one I think one or two friends maybe, maybe I think just one came to Priory and everyone else went to meal across the road um, 
and then in that year this one friend decided that she wanted to be friends with the cool the cool crowd right and I'm not I'm not in the cool crowd I've always always been the person who does the opposite <laughs> to what, what is expected and, <laughs> and to, to the crowd and so um so yeah so this was a, a really difficult time for me especially that first year but then um I found my real friends who are actually I'm still best friends with them now even through all this big transition that I've been through in the past three years they're still there they're still the same person um I'm still the same person deep down and um yeah so uh, but the school didn't nurture the arts at all that in fact they didn't even run GCSE music <laughs> which I think made me want to do music even more because it was like okay they're trying to you know there's something in the way now um, and I learned at secondary school I learned the oboe and then I taught myself the flute and the clarinet and the saxophone from that and I was in all the bands and I was creating I was started writing music then actually writing it down um, and yeah it was okay but I certainly as an introvert as well this this big big place with all of this people stuff going on um, and I didn't realize anything about being an empath or being empathic or, or what I could do to protect myself or anything like that so yeah secondary school for me was definitely really hard really hard work um, socially and emotionally so, so when it was time to leave, I mean, no doubt you were singing very highly, <laughs> leaving the building. But, you know, then what did you do? What You went into higher education. What, what happened when you left school? Yeah, um, I went to Sixth Form College, which was an incredible two years because I took music and drama and classics. Um, um, and so it was a, a, a real awakening and um, anyone who's done music at Shrewsbury Sixth Form with um, Dave, Dave Place, who was the music teacher there for years and years and years, and I know lots and lots of people have um, turned their life around through music with him and of course the music service. So I was in um, all the orchestras and all the bands and I went on tour with them um, and it was, it was a, oh, um, I am, I can do this. This is innate. This is, I am a musician. Um, and even though I didn't have this, this GCT, I didn't have the theory in the background. Um, I just went, Vum. Wow. <laughs> and, um, especially in music. And I ended up, um, yeah, ending those two years the, with the, like, I think one of the highest marks in the country for the A level or something like that. And mm -hmm. the, um, particularly with the composing. And I remember um, Dave said to me, oh, if you want to write music, if you want to do the composing element, just, just do it, Jenny. I don't really know anything about it, just do it. Hardly anyone did, did the composition. And I didn't understand. I was like, well, that's the easiest part, isn't it? Well, obviously not. Um, it's something that I had. And then more recently, since I've got into my holistic work and my spiritual work, and I've uh, got into my shamanic work, I've come to realize that um, that my my writing ability, my intuitive music ability is it's quite often a download. <laughs> so it's either there or it isn't. Um, and it's almost like channeling, channeling music. Um, so after sixth form, I went on to study music at Bath Spa University. And Bath has always been a really, precious special sacred place to me since I visited in primary school actually we um we went on a trip in primary school like a year six trip and I remember thinking whoa this is this is a place this is a this is a place yes and so that's why I ended up going to university there to study music met some amazing musicians some amazing tutors um who were all like, whoa, <laughs> okay, you can do this. And, and I still didn't have this self-belief, this self-worth. I still thought, well, it's nothing special, you know. Um, I had 
I had a, I had a, a good three years. Um, some stuff happened, which um, blocked me a little bit. Um, yeah, but um, I did, I came out of that knowing that I wanted to do music and knowing that I wanted to share music as well. Um, and again, I came out <laughs> top of the class. <laughs> <laughs> first class, first class honors, top of the class. I won the, the university composition prize and the university performance prize um, on the oboe. Um, and then I went on to do my PGCE, my teaching year. Um, and I met, also met my now husband, Ben. So that was, um, yeah, so I was like 21. Um, did my PGCE. And that was a, a horrendous year because it's so pressurized doing teacher training. And uh, suddenly I wasn't really doing music anymore. I was just following other people's rules and other people's guidelines and doing stuff with the kids that I didn't think really served them. Um, but I had to play the game. That's where I learned to play the game of the system. Um, and, and I got through it. And then after that, I said, right, I'm going back to, to music, music. And I did a master's at Birmingham Conservatoire in composition. Um, and I stayed living in Bath because I was deeply in love with, with my husband that I just met. So I stayed living in Bath. I signed up to a supply teaching agency and worked four days a week, commuting to Swindon mostly <laughs> to teach music. Ah! Um, and then um, commuted to Birmingham once a week and then sometimes a little bit more on weekends and stuff to study comp composition with, with the top amazing, amazing people. Howard Skempton, uh, such a beautiful, pure British composer. His music is just uh, divine. If you haven't ever heard any of it. Um, and Joe Cutler. Uh, he does very incredibly complex rhythmic music um, and then met lots of other composers and performers along the way. Had an incredible two years part time and got my master's from Birmingham Conservatoire. And then, um, yeah, and then this, this job landed with um, Wiltshire Music Service as oboe principal teacher and uh, woodwind and directing um, the county area band and going in and doing this thing called wider opportunities in schools which was a government scheme where um, they provided money for every child to learn an instrument in school that's a great scheme <laughs> yeah really great scheme so um so yeah there was funding back then to go in and do whole class like I did whole class recorder and whole class ocarina and whole class singing even tried whole class flutes whole class oboe that was crazy um, <laughs> wow. and, and yeah so work work there had my kids in 2011 I got married 2008 had my kids in 2011 and 2013 my boys um, Robin and Leo um, and yeah, and, that, and, I, and I was kind of in this, this um, ideal life. I was in this ideal, I had my dream job. I was working in music, I was working in teaching. We didn't particularly have to follow a curriculum. So I really was using music for connection and self-esteem and fun and joy. And, um, and it was, yeah, particularly I loved running the community band and bringing all of my pupils together in community and I'm finding in my work now that's the thing I love the most doing the women's circles and bringing all of my clients together um yeah and and then I have my kids and I was like okay well I've got a house I've got a husband I've got my job my good salary I've got my kids I'm really unhappy. <laughs> I'm really unhappy. Why am I so unhappy? 
And then um, we thought, okay, maybe our house is too small. We'll move. We'll move. We've got enough money now. We'll move. We went. We went and um, made. Uh, we sold our house really quickly. Made an offer on a big house in Wiltshire. Really beautiful house. And then suddenly, uh, the music service made us all redundant. And my my first my first um, reaction was oh good okay i'm free i'm free i'm free from working for the system and the idea was that we all went self-employed and the new hub acted more as a a catalog (laughs) for us as, as a promotion for us um and so we moved, we moved to Westbury in Wiltshire and where I went self-employed. So then I had much more of a choice of where I could work, what I wanted to do, when I, when I could work. And this was my first taste of self-employment in my whole, my whole life. So I must have been um, about 29 and um, yeah, 30 yeah something like that and um and it was great (laughs) it was great really loved the way it worked um i got a job also as head of music in a big primary school um which in which i had completely free reign so the head recognized the benefits of music his son had been through all the music service and i had completely free reign to do whatever i wanted and I had a budget, I had my own budget. And um, this, was, this was just wonderful. And I had, um, there must have been about 350 children in the school. And um, I was just there for a year. I did two concerts and in the second concert, I had 300 <laughs> of the 350 children in the, in the, in the concert. Um, playing singing you know they just they just inclusive was my was my mantra everyone can join everyone can play a drum absolutely everyone and I worked so hard especially to get the kids whose parents didn't couldn't bring them to the concert or wouldn't bring them to a concert or you know and these kids had come every lunchtime um to practice and, and this was what I was really working with. I was really working therapeutically with the kids, finally, honestly, <laughs> because I've been doing that the whole time, especially with one-to-one teaching that I did. I sometimes I would one-to-one teach children for six, seven years. I'd see them every week. And of course that's gonna turn into a therapeutic relationship. Of course it is. Um, and so I was beginning to see what I was really doing and recognize it. Um, and then also I got a job as, as um, and this was all like self-employed area hub coordinator. So I would um, do big, big music projects for all the local schools to come together. And I would bring together all of the music coordinators and coordinate training and stuff. Um, incredible. And um, I was also still directing the band and um, they provided some incredible trainings for us. And I went along to one training in this year called Music and Mindfulness. I was like, music and mindfulness, what's that all about then? I'll go to it, it's free, it's free. So here I met a play therapist and music therapist called Matthew Hemson and did a day of uh, music meditation with him and this was the first time he put on this course as well (laughs) and something went (laughs) so this must have been about three and a half four years ago and something changed that day because really all of my career was um ideal idealistic perfect you know everything was going really really well but I would still get home 
at night and go, hmm, something's missing. <laughs> hmm, what's missing? Something's missing. And also since I had my kids, there was this like, this homing signal was going off. Since I had Robin in 2011. Come home, come home, to Shropshire. <laughs> Literally, like a siren. And I know yeah. my career's really good here. I've built it up. Everyone knows me. My career's amazing. That's the most important thing. That's what I've been taught. Good job, good home, good car, good, nice family. That's the most important thing. And then after this workshop, a few months later, we were having real problems with Robin, my eldest. So he, um, people who see him think he's a girl. He's very gender fluid. And um, he was having some issues with this. We could tell that he was having some issues with his identity. We don't have any issues with his identity. His friends don't have any issues, but he was starting to recognize that he was a bit different. Um, so I got in touch with this play therapist, Matthew. Can Robin come for some play therapy? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, great. So off we took him for this play therapy. And every session for about six sessions, he, he went, yeah, you should really try some of this, Jenny. You should come and do a, and he uses the sand tray um, and uh, symbolism based on Carl Jung. Um, you should come and do a sand tray. I was like, I don't know why he wants me to do a sand tray. Robin's got the, Robin's, Robin needs us to do the sand tray, not me. <laughs> and then a job came up with Shropshire Music Service. And so I had a decision to make. And my best friend from school, from year seven at school, the friend that I made in that difficult year, um, was also moving back home to Shrewsbury that year and so Rick said my husband said why aren't we what are we doing here like we've got no family here Claire's moving back the job's just come up what are we doing and so I went to this play therapist and said is this sand tray thing is this going to help me make a decision about <laughs> life <laughs> and he said yeah 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 give it a go so one evening I did a sand tray session and that, and, and I'd had, I tried some counseling before. I tried some like talking count therapies and got really annoyed with them. Like just didn't work really annoyed. Um, after I had, I had a big car accident. And so I'd had some talking therapies. And I was like, a waste of time. And I did this sand tray session. It was an hour. And there it was. My whole life was so clear in this tray of sand. Wow. <laughs> so clear. It just laid out before me what I had to do. Um, and I knew immediately that I had to move back to Shropshire and I had to move back to Shropshire now. And so I went and I got the job with Shropshire Music Service and um, we put the house on the market. We'd only been there for a year and a half ish put the house on the market sold really quickly and um a few months later we were ready to move and that's when the awakening really happened so you've moved back to Shropshire so describe what happened then well just before um we moved back i carried on doing sand tray sessions um for about must have been maybe four months before we moved and i was going deep fast really 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 stripping back and going deep very very fast and changing so fast i was ready <laughs> and then literally the the week that I was doing my last big concerts and I'd been with my my band now for 
something like 11 years, some crazy amount of time. So this was a huge um, goodbye. And I'd written um, a series of pieces for some of my colleagues and I to play, very personal pieces to play in this last concert. Um, and I hadn't written for many years. I couldn't write for many, this whole time actually, since I finished my master's up to the t three years ago, I couldn't write. There was nothing. And then after doing a few therapy sessions with Sandre, I, I was back and I'd written th these beautiful heartfelt pieces for my colleagues and I to play in the last concert. And then I had, um, I had like a, a flashback to when I was 19. All of a sudden, it just came in really clearly that um, a boy that was on my course when I was 19 had drugged me and had raped me at university. Wow. And so that came in literally the, the week of all these big farewell before I moved, moved back to Shropshire. And obviously, it was like it had just happened mm. to my body. You know, it was just, a, my body had held it all that time and it was just coming out. It was just being revealed. I, I'd, I'd shored up my relationship with my husband. I'd shored up what, what I was doing, where I was going. And so the disassociation had gone right. You can, you can, you can sort this out now. You can know about this. You can, you can see this now. You're strong enough. Mm. So that happened, yeah, right before the move here, literally the month before. And that's, and then we moved here in the August. Um, and, and that, that was the start of my, my spiritual awakening because I really, really, within a few months, hit rock bottom. The job with the music service here was terrible. <laughs> terrible compared to what I was doing in Wiltshire. You know, I had no freedom, you know. They would take, they wouldn't listen to anything that I wanted to do. <laughs> um, and um, wasn't enjoying it at all. Operated so differently to what I was used to. Um, and yeah, I just hit complete rock bottom, complete rock bottom, which I think a lot of people do when they have their, their awakenings um, into this kind of stuff. And so we got my dog. She saved my life, literally, the December of that year. My little Betsy, my little Spaniel. Um, and I looked into what am I, what am I gonna do? I don't, I don't want to teach anymore. I don't want to do that. I'm not interested. I just really want to help people. And it, in my um, own therapeutic work, I was doing a lot of reading as well about trauma and how it affects everything and everything was falling into place. I was like, oh, that's why I felt like that. And that's why I acted like that. And that's why this, 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 this happened, you know? Everything was just like, okay, 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 okay. I get it and I know what I have to do to shift it and um, yeah and then I was looking for a therapist here in, in Shrewsbury and Ruth Cato kept popping up on Facebook, Ruth Cato, I was like well she keeps popping up, don't really know what she does but there she is there's her face again. <laughs> so I went along to see her 1st of July, two years ago. Yeah, so almost exactly two years ago. 1st of July, I remember it very well. Um, went along to see her and had just the most incredible shamanic healing session not that I knew anything about shamanism, had ever even heard that word before. 
where um, I released three ancestors, three women, who had been shouting at me my whole life <laughs> about sexual abuse and about rape and, and shouting, and they'd all experienced the same, of course, in their lifetimes, so come down the bloodline. And, um, and they, they did, they, they shouted at me. And again, I assumed that this was normal, particularly when I had a, a fever or a temperature, they would shout at me. And when I was a child, my mum would freak out because I'd be saying I'd be hearing voices and they were angry. And they were only angry because I wasn't thinking that what had happened to me was, an, was a problem or an issue or um, dealing with it. And so in this session, Ruth didn't need to do much. I went in and saw everything and spoke to them and released them. And I opened my eyes at the end of the session. I was just sitting opposite her and did it all. I opened my eyes and, and, and was like, okay. And she went, she was like, right. <laughs> um, I went, yeah, it's fine. I saw all this, that, da, 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 da. did that. It's normal, right? Not really. <laughs> And um, j yeah, just amazing. And then I remember messaging my, my play therapist guy and saying, um, I just released three ancestors in a shamanic healing session, just sent them off on their way. And he said, wow, don't get that message every day. And um, yeah, and from there I got involved with the Sacred Healing Center and Joanna Summers um, with the Andean shamanism and that just made so much sense it felt like i've been doing it forever forever and ever and ever for a million lifetimes it just made so much sense and felt like home um and then from there uh i started my play therapy i i started a play therapy qualification because i thought okay i'm not teaching anymore um what can i do I'm working therapeutically with the children I always have done. Let's, let's get a qualification in it. Um, so I did a postgraduate certificate at Leeds Beckett University with Play Therapy UK in play therapy, non-directive. So it uses sand tray, it uses uh, clay therapy. Oh, clay therapy, amazing. Working with the earth, basically. Um, painting, music, movement, all of the creative arts therapies. So I started doing that. And then this, um, and through that, obviously I'm, I'm peeling back more of my own stuff. We're doing loads of self work and loads of work in the trays. Um, start working with children really, really quickly. Just love letting them be, letting them discover themselves. Because once they've got themselves and they know themselves, like no one can take that away from them, right? Great. And I'm not telling them what to do or how to do it. They're just finding it out for themselves. So yeah. Um, and I saw, and this is where we come to the more the work that I'm doing now. Uh, September, two years ago, uh, I saw in a dance training advertised in Bristol. And I thought, great therapeutic dance that'll be perfect to go with my play therapy that'll be really useful to use with the kids and went along very innocent <laughs> and um and it started with uh, my wonderful now teacher mentor friend katie holland um taught it and she learned with the founder um in the philippines and went along and the first thing we did was we did, we were put in to an inner dance, which is like uses, if people haven't done it before with me or know anything about it, it uses uh, brainwave states to take you on a, a, on a like shamanic journey and put you in a trance state. Um, people who've done ayahuasca, ayahuasca say it's similar to that, but I haven't done that. Um, <laughs> so 
yeah went along and and did this and <sighs> traveled the universe basically traveled the universe and couldn't just whoa mm -hmm. the inner dance energy is is so incredibly moving um and so yeah did this four or five day training in inner dance um carried on my shamanic work with joanna summers and then was also recommended by ruth to go and see a lady called bliss russell in stroud so i was just following i was just really like intuitively following everything all the little strands and everything was falling into place and the people that i needed to meet were synchronistically appearing everything was <laughs> and um went to see bliss I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> what do I need? <laughs> and she said, you need your Reiki attunement, Jenny. I went, oh, what's that then? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, great. So we did that in November. The same week that um, I put on my first public inner dance. So my first public inner dance in November, just done my Reiki attunement. And then my drum, I've been looking for a drum for ages and this also appeared that week. Beautiful, beautiful drum. Um, so bearing in mind, I'd never really, I'd never done, certainly never put on a holistic workshop for grown-ups. <laughs> um, and it sold out. It sold out this first workshop in November. I'd just done my Reiki attunement. This was my first tangible experience of energy. Um, I could really feel it and see it and dance with it. Um, created my playlist for Inner Dance, put on the workshop. It was full up, 10 people. And a big part of Inner Dance is touch as well, moving energy with touch and taking people in and out of their bodies with touch um, and then as being a musician I take my instruments and I I play live and intuitively as well and again it's definitely downloading and and giving what that person needs or what these this group needs um, melody wise rhythmic wise and so did this in November And it was like, <laughs> and it was just incredible. It was like I had arrived home. I was home. This is my, this is my work. This is what I've been doing for many, many lifetimes. And in fact, I'd had, I had a vision a couple of months later where I saw myself in, in a cave in ancient times doing energy work but the only reference I had for it was in a dance. So I assumed that it was like in a dance work, but it was basically doing shamanic energy healing. Um, and the people in the workshop said, whoa, can you turn your Reiki down, please? You know, it's just really, it's really. Um, and, and it went from there. Um, Continue to have successful workshops, absolutely loving every second of it. Continuing to work on my own personal wounds and traumas, meeting all kinds of different healers, trying all kinds of different um, holistic methods, EFT, got an incredible kinesiologist, incredible kinesiologist who, um, where I did a massive body cleanse um, and lost a lot of weight and um, regained a lot of physical strength, um, did a lot of soul retrieval. Um, and then in April last year, I was like, right, okay, I'm going to do this now. <laughs> I'm going to do this universe. And I gave up my job with the music service and I was just finishing my play therapy qualification and I'd just done my Reiki practitioner level. I thought, right, yeah, come on. 
are we going to do it? So I gave up, yeah, gave up the job and launched myself fully into the holistic healing world. And then also uh, did my awaken belly dance training in Bulgaria. So that was two intensive weeks again with the wonderful Katie Holland, um, which uses sacred, all the sacred geometry of the body and particularly women's bodies to release generations of trauma stored and also um, collective traumas and also obviously our own, what's happened in our own lifetimes. And that, that helped hugely for the sexual trauma that I'd experienced and my sexuality. Absolutely incredible for that. Um, and building tribes. It also builds, uh, it's, it's rebuilding the idea of sisterhood, which again links back to, I think what many women girls have experienced in school which is the bitchiness and the competitiveness and the um, backstabbing which is what I experienced at secondary school and Awaken Belly Dance really brings brings that sense of sisterhood and support and tribe back mm. um, so yeah did that and then came back and I met my shamanic teacher I'd been looking for a while. I was like, I need to really do this shamanism thing properly. And the lands, again, I moved home three years ago and this is when it all started. It's like the land where I was born went, ah, <laughs> let's be having you. Come on. Um, and so I met my shamanic teacher who lives in Kidderminster, Joe Malloy. And I've been studying the Andean Andean shamanism, Peruvian shamanism for a year now. I have my working, building my mesa and my medicine stones and very, very much finding that I'm working with the land of, of here. I've got a special woods at the end of my road. Um, Care Caradoc is really, really important to me. The Stiper Stones um, just discovered the incredible waterfall in Pontesbury. Um, which is, of course, volcanic originally, um, and along Mind, and I'm just finding that I'm being called, and I'm working. I'm actually really working with the land, the earth, the nature spirits of all of these different places, um, and of course, that's what I was doing as a child, <laughs> but I just had no idea because my parents have no idea sure. you know about it um so that's what I would have been doing when I moved away and when I lived down in Wiltshire I didn't go anywhere near Glastonbury or anywhere like that even though it was really <laughs> slow <laughs> like I didn't I just wasn't it wasn't calling me at all but since I've moved up here I've been back down there many many times it has now called me um yeah so awake belly dance training and then from there um it's it's gone into creating spaces for people to be themselves and to come together um so women's medicine circle and the community drumming circle um looking into creating more spaces for children to come together especially after all that they've been through in the past three months um and uh yeah hence i and, and now here i am stepping more and more and more every day into the truth of who i am um and and <laughs> and and living a happy life living a happy life and living a, an honest life and living an authentic life um and speaking my truth and speaking my truth to my parents, you know, who had certain expectations of who I would be and what I would do. And, but now speaking what, what I am and what I am doing. So how did they, how did they cope with that? Because as you say, they had certain expectations and I suppose if there's young people watching this just now, um, 
maybe they have parents that have expectations. How did you deal with that? Mm. I think what I've come to is that I am so certain in myself and through the self work I know my worth and I know my path and I know how to listen to me and my voice and not other people's and my mom and dad have their own opinions and their own path and I respect that and I respect that a lot of what I'm doing now they won't understand but that's okay because I know that everything that I'm doing is for the good of all of the people that I'm working with and for the good of myself and the land. and so as long as I am living that authentic compassionate life from my heart space then I know that I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm sure that eventually my mum and dad will realise <laughs> that I'm doing also not doing anything wrong that I'm doing the right thing even if they can't understand it they will know in their heart spaces that I'm doing the right thing I think that's very important for anybody in life, isn't it? Is to go where your heart sings and not where another tune is playing. Yes. So now you, I know that you're doing your medicine circles, you're doing your drumming workshops, your uh, belly dancing workshops, all of this fantastic work. Um, then we've had this lockdown. Are you doing anything online or is everything on a one-to-one -one basis? Yeah, so all of my one-to-one -one work, my shamanic, so what I've, I've actually during lockdown, lo like lots of people, um, I've had a real, real growth in, in how, what I'm doing and how it all works and it, it's all come together. So before I was splitting stuff up into Reiki and shamanic work and sound healing and dance work. I was splitting it all into categories. This is what I do. But um, definitely during lockdown and during going in even more um I've, I've brought it all together so in my one-to-one -one sessions now i use music which works with the brain waves to take you on a journey i um use shamanic techniques andean shamanic techniques and my medicine stones i use reiki i use movement and I also use um, counselling techniques because that's another thing I did. I did a level three in counselling as well over the past couple of years. So I also use counselling and non-directive therapeutic techniques. And all of this can be done over the internet in exactly the same way. In fact, sometimes it works even better uh, because energy is energy and the distance actually doesn't make any difference. So all of that can be done over the internet and has I have been doing a lot. Um, also, I've been doing uh, medicine dance journeys every couple of weeks. So these are guided journeys uh, where, again, I create a playlist which is um, for the energy of that day. I love creating playlists. Love it, love it, love it. And often songs will come in that are for the people who are attending. So again, it's a kind of channeling. Um, so yeah, so I create a playlist for, for that day and then that's on Zoom every couple of weeks and I guide a little bit as to, uh, where to look at in your body and, um, I feel, I can feel what everyone's feeling. So, uh, we might be dancing and I might suddenly feel like a deep sadness in my belly. So. <laughs> and that's another way that I work. I very much feel in my body what what the person I'm working with is is feeling and and clear it. 
both through them and through my body. Um, so I might feel like a deep sadness in my belly and say, oh, sink into your belly and release a deep sadness in your belly. <laughs> and this is how, this is how they work. Um, so I'm doing that online. Um, and then also I have started doing some circles out in nature. Um, so I did one, one in a friend's garden last week and then uh, one down at Lidholz waterfall um, a few days ago, which was beautiful. Um, then I'm doing another at Mitchell's fold at the end of the month. And so they've all sold out. Then I'm doing a circle, a men and women's circle, mixed circle at the Stiper Stones on the 14th of August. That's still got spaces. Um, so these are all my sacred places. Uh, I feel really honoured to be able to take people to them and work with them with people, with other powerful people. Um, and yeah, and then I've got a retreat day on the 22nd of August, a whole day with eight women down again at Lidholz Waterfall in Pontesbury, which has unfortunately sold out <laughs> as well. <laughs> It's wonderful that you're doing this and it's obviously, you know, you're so happy, you can see it and you can feel it from you that you're, you are walking your truth and you're, you're actually, you know, being your authentic self. So if anybody's watching this and they would like to keep up to date with what you're doing and maybe come along in something that you are doing, how do they find out? Do you have a website or a Facebook page? How do people find out about you? Yeah, um, I have a Facebook page, Nurture Within is my business name, Nurture Within. And then also I do have a website, um, which I'm still, well, I did construct, but since so much change has happened in the past few months again, I'm reconstructing. So if you go there at the moment, it's a little bit higgledy piggledy, but I'm working on it. And that's www.nurturewithin.net. And also you can sign up to a mailing list on there yeah um so yeah and then i'm just about to start a new job too <laughs> oh, <right. Okay. laughs> i'm going into um i got a job at a children's home yeah so i'm going to be doing that just one shift a week um working with the children who have suffered the most the most trauma in their lives and had the most difficult beginnings um, and so I'm just I'm just thrilled I'm so excited to be going and working with these kids and and hopefully using all the stuff that I've learned um, and my intuition to yeah help them to know themselves as much as they can and be themselves and rediscover themselves underneath what they've experienced that sounds such important work and you know when you combine that with what you're doing with everything else um it's absolutely amazing that you've went round this journey and and done all of these things a lot of the stuff that you did when you were younger but now you know why you've went all around that way haven't you you know now why your life has turned out the way it has. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great what you're doing. Um, and I'll be putting this up on YouTube and I'll put up your contact details as well. I'll give links to your website and to your Facebook page. And I, I, I would just like to say thank you so much, Jenny, for coming on, but also for being so honest as well and uh, for sharing your story with us. I think... You know, you're one brave lady, absolutely. <laughs> but you're one lady full of joy. You know, it's always <laughs> a joy to be in your company. You've got such beautiful energy. It's, it's always lovely to, to be around you. And, and, and just thank you. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for uh, just being you. Thank you. Yeah, I think that is, I am really stepping in now. That is my medicine. My medicine is, is, being my truth and living in my freedom and just just being that with other people it's very simple <laughs> really 
Life is simple when you strip away all the stuff that you don't really need and or want. It's always quite simple. Yeah. So thank you very much, and you, um, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you. you.